just to remember, guys, um, it's very important just to like when we're looking at polar points. Remember, guys, polar points talks about the radius as well as the distance. So it's like whatever the how far it is away from the origin, right? Which is technically the like hypotenuse, right? If you can if you can figure out the x and the y coordinates, right? The r represents basically the hypotenuse, and then the angle is basically the angle in standard form, right? Theta. So that's what we have here. We have r and theta. So r represents the radius. Now again, remember it was negative, and I know that was a tricky part, especially for the people that weren't paying attention. Um, and the, that is going to be the angle that we're going to represent it. Now we just need to represent this in um, we just need to represent this in rectangular form. And what we found was the conversion. Is this, if we can figure out what the point is on the unit circle, then we just multiply it by r to get the square root of the point. So remember, the point on the unit circle was, and then how do we represent that on the unit circle? Cosine of theta and sine of theta. So you figure out what cosine of theta and sine of theta is, and then you just multiply it by r. So I still have some people that aren't paying attention, so they probably won't get this part right. But if you want the general formula, it was just r. negative 2 times the sine of negative pi over 3. Let's figure out what is the coordinate point of negative pi over 3. Obviously, negative pi over 3 is down here, right? That's so going to be this coordinate point. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's a positive 1 half. Negative square root of 3 over 2. So let's go ahead. Negative 2 times a positive 1 half. Negative 2 times a negative square root of 3 over 2. Choice. Looks like that is answer choice C. Good? Yes. Sure. Does that clear it up a little bit? Just remember you guys know the difference between rectangular and polar. 